Hi everyone, Julie here, and I'm not quite sure what my camera's doing, playing um, silly buggers, I think. What I'm about to do is a very tricky part of this quilt, and I'm not actually sure if you can, if you can see what I'm doing because of the sunshine, you should be able to, is what I have here is the shark. Now, normally I do the quilt, you know, in entire blocks. But because I wanted to get the shark in place bef well, as I finish the sky, what it means is that it's hanging down a bit, same as the rocks from the lighthouse were hanging down, but now they're level because I did an extra couple of layers or rows of, of the sea. So what I've got this shark actually covers three pages. So I'm not sure if you can see these very carefully. There's its nose. That's the bulk of the body with the gills. And the final one covers the tail. So I'm only worried today, or at the start, for the one that covers his nose. Now, if I look at my plan, then that basically sits there and I've got to work all the way around it. Now, I don't sew hexagons in with everything facing upwards. So what I'm going to have to do is swing it all around until it's upside down, which means it's now looking like it's at the wrong end of the table. Let's see if I can get him in there. The colours will get better once I, um, once I stop being in the direct sunlight. So what I've got is I've got my pictures upside down, or the right way up, but my shark is actually upside down. So what I'm going to do to save any major confusion because anyone who's done hexagons or a lot of hexagons will know that things can get confusing. Now on my picture I'll put a cross through those two top rows because I know that I've done them but I'm now going to put an even bigger cross through them so as I don't accidentally... Um, colour them in. So obviously the shark's all done and so if we look at that that's a bit, it could be a bit easier for you to see, probably not because this light is disastrous. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to, I've worked out how many of each colour I need I need 28 turquoise, 40 blue for the sea, and 8 for some sand. So I've got them here in a container. Just dump them onto the, onto the bench there, onto the table. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put these in place. So the turquoise are the easiest. And this is probably going to be a disaster waiting to happen because all it's going to take is one very slight wrong move and everything's going to go. But we'll see. Okay, well that's some of the turquoise and keeping in mind that it, um, it is a pain. So then we're going to go from the tip of the nose, one, as long as I can get this bit in right, I can adjust all the rest. Okay, there's a row of three, three of the, three of the, the C, then two of the C. Doesn't look like it's fitting together. 
you know, those two of the sea go further over because I need two of the seaweed. Two seaweed. Two sea. Just trying to make all these fit in. And one more sea. So what I've basically done is this bit above Oh, one more. Had a gap. Okay. So I've done that bit that's above the shark's head. So what that means now is that all the rest of it is pretty simple. Let's get the... seaweed in or the border this is the last of the oh, that was the wrong color this is the last turquoise pieces I'll need to do for this quilt and this will be my third quilt that is predominantly turquoise or has a fair amount of turquoise in it I said this is just for the border some of these turquoise I've got probably another hundred Turquoise ones, considering I was buying this stuff by the meter all over the place, I'm surprised it's actually lasted for the number of quilts. So I've got probably a hundred, hundred and a bit turquoise hexagons left. They'll get used in fish and what have you in the next one. So we'll come back down below the shark's nose. Not sure if I've got all the right numbers here. These blocks for row eight are only well, they're two rows shorter than all the normal blocks because of adding two rows for this for the um for the C. So let's just put these ones in and we can then have a bit of a count and make sure I haven't miscalculated somewhere terribly. So below the tip of the nose, I've got four here below the tip of the nose. Not supposed to be yellow. And I need more turquoise, it needs to come down further. You get used to if you if you are designing a quilt you get used to looking at everything upside down and if it's not upside down it's upside down and back to front it's only because I've done the updates on the quilt that I've actually seen what it looks like from the front because normally I don't see the front of a quilt until well, pretty much so it's ready to be pinned together for, for quilting. Oh, it's garbage truck outside. I thought it was the postie. But it's not. So this is actually going further down than I expected. We shouldn't surprise me, and we just have to listen to the garbage truck for now. So the main thing is to... The main thing is to remember... Okay, what have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I should... There's one more there. And one more here. Nope, that's still not right. And there should be one more turquoise. Which, there it is. Which goes there. So that's all the turquoise, that's the blue. So as I'm doing this, I'm working from the left across, but I'm because I'm upside down. I'm working from the right across on the actual on the actual mat, 
and I'm doing it on a separate map for reasons that you will see soon enough so the rest of these pieces are just going to be the sea there's no other seaweed in this one and I'll have a look shortly as to what is in the next pictures but basically what I'm going to do to sew these together seeing as this is tricky is I'm going to basically sew them in rows I think going up and down would be easier I could do what I normally do and start as a circle probably about here but then I'm going to end up with all that top bit that's going to be confusing and messy so I think that a a um, just in rows I've just got to sort out which way to go should work the best See, there's one that goes up into right up into the um, shark so it should be 10 this is num row number nine you know vertical rows one more to go after this one so these blocks are smaller not just because the shark's taking up a chunk of it but because it's two rows shorter so instead of 115 hexagons per block there is two rows of 10 so there's 20 less so there's 95 if I take out the shark one two three four five six fourteen so that brings it down it's 81 hexagons for this block so this is part the first part of this video so what I've done is I've gone by my chart I've laid it all out which I'm pretty sure you can see it all laid out there I know the lighting's probably terrible but what I'm actually going to do now is gently pull that part away so what I'm left with and I can move this around and move it somewhere safe that is all the pieces for this block so they're all just sitting there and I know that the lighting is terrible so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to push that over to the side and I'm going to decide how I'm going to do this whether I'm going to swing it round so technically it's upside down which means that if I swing my mat of pieces around I will work across the rows so I'm going to put some band-aids on my finger get some thread on the needle and see how I go I'll probably just do this little bit in front of the shark's nose or at least get it so I can then just work across do rows across but I will pause the video now and come back before too long okay I'm back now and what I've done not sure if you can see this properly is I need to move the camera back is I've done that's better sort of I've done this bit around the nose of the shark what I've got to do next is one row of one two three four five hexagons and then I think there might be another incomplete row and then I'm down to doing ten and it'll just be done in in rows um, across until I finished then I'll come back and start the second block I've gained the cat 
for the time being. She was on here earlier this morning. Um, not sure, you can't see it in this light. Um, but she's got a huge lump here on her side. She's, um, oh, now she's getting up. You can see where the fur's a bit ruffled. Now I can't see anything because the camera's pointing the wrong way. But, um, yeah, just a huge lump on the side. Started off the size of a half a ping pong ball. Then it moved to about half a golf ball. And now it's bigger. It's, um, she's, I took it to the vet when I first noticed it, which was before Christmas. And they took a sample. She said it's not, it's not attached to anything. You know, like any organ or anything. So, either that or it's not attached to the skin. It's one of the two anyhow. But she put a probe in to see if she could, you know, see any cancer cells or anything but she couldn't see anything of anything so we don't know if it's cancer or it's obviously not just a full of pus otherwise when she put the probe in it would have all squirted out but she's not bothered by it other than she just um she won't lie on that side often she's a lot more clingy and she's lost a hell of a lot of weight. I mean, I doubt she even weighs a kilo now. This used to be like a five kilo absolute fat cat. I mean, she's only got very small head, very small paws. I mean, she's 16, so she's had a good run. The past year's been rough since Clancy was put down because it's just been her on her own. And I haven't had a lot of patience with her with the pain from my hip, but now that's gone... I'm a lot more patient with her and yeah she comes and yeah you know, she'll snuggle in at night and if I go and have a nap like in the recliner but otherwise she's pretty much she's got her own chair in the lounge room next to my desk she just keeps to herself and yeah not eating anywhere near the amount she's probably eating a third of what she used to eat but she's still drinking and going in the litter, so she's got basically no interest in going outside, which I don't mind at all. I mean, I feel sorry for her being the only cat, but the thing is, there's no way I'm getting another cat. We, we had six. She's the actual last one out of that six. And I had two cats before that. Um... Yeah, it's, I've had my lifetime's quota. You know, chances are if I get another, like a kitten, it could outlive me, and I, that's not fair on any animal. So, unfortunately, this one's going to have to put up with the final days on her own. She did go to my friend's house when I went to hospital. I thought she might get along with her cat there. He's only about three years old, three or four, but all she did was hiss at him, so... There went that option for her to find, you know, someone to bond with. She would bond with a kitten. There'd be no problem with that. But I don't want a kitten. I don't want another 15 to 20 years of tied down with an animal and worrying about them. And, and you know, I'm not even talking about the cost of food and vets and everything else. It's just, you know, I've had enough. If I was ever to get another cat, it would be an old rescue cat, but only on its own not with any other animals and now she's slobbering all over me she takes a long time now before she decides to actually lie down she'll sit for ages and ages and ages and then lie down but as soon as I get up to go and make a cuppa now she'll come and join me in the kitchen wanting food even though she's just eaten so I will get back to this shark I'll finish this block get the next block all lined up then I'll be back so whether that's today tomorrow the next day next week it'll be when it'll be I'll see how my eyes go for getting this done but it's definitely getting there that's probably the that and where the tail is will be the trickiest two blocks of the entire quilt but I think I think I'll be all right I'll, I'll do I'll get these three blocks done in this one video so I will see you when I'm back filming. I've now finished the first block 
with the shark which is I can't really show you because the cat's in the way and I don't want to disturb her because she's not doing too well but this is actually showing sideways which I suppose that's right so that's the border that's a line of seaweed which oh, sorry kitty kitty um, so that's that block done the next block is pretty easy it um, just comes along to just comes along to here but I need to do three three pieces of sea that go beside the um, up where the fins are I'm not sure if this actually no, it does line up so this all lines up down to there so it'll be rows and then there'll be three to do up here and then comes the very tricky one which is with the tail fins and I've also had to make sure with the seaweed because when I do my drawings and the same goes for you know if it's you know the first block or just a block of sky I need to make sure it lines up with what's below it so there's no point doing seaweed that sort of starts off nowhere I mean I do it a few times throughout the quilt but basically the seaweed will run all the way from bottom to top or at least from the top of the sand upwards so these lines of seaweed that not even sure if you can see any of this there we go this is the um see if we can get it that way this is the block and for some reason it's showing sideways but I'll move it around there's the block I've got the seaweed and it actually lines up with the seaweed on the um, row below which is row 7 so I've made sure because I've done the first couple of blocks for row 7 that it all lines up so I'm going to leave it for today and go and get the cat out of here because she's just not happy. Um, she's having trouble lying down. She's not, she's not doing well. Like I said yesterday, she weighs absolutely nothing. So I'll put her down and she can come and see if she wants something to eat. And we'll go in the other room and cover some hexagons I think later on today I've still got some for the few hundred to do for the sky for the second quilt and I'll do that and I'll come back and do this tomorrow and then that'll just leave the one other block hopefully she'll still be around in the next few days but um, we'll see how she goes hi everyone I'm not sure how well this is turning out but um, the shark is two thirds of the way done around it so that's blocks one and two for row eight and now done what that leaves me with is the trickiest part of the whole quilt which I'll try and move the cat out of the way a little bit which is the bit that goes around the tail now this bottom bit isn't too bad there's two complete rows before I come to any part of the tail but it's still not going to be easy what I'm thinking of doing is doing this top section I've got the hexagons all all laid out so I've got this top section which is here and that's a bottom and that's a bit that's all um, just easy rows really the two bottom but I've got 
for basically five rows, five vertical rows that are complete which would be nice to get them out the way first but they won't, that will end up going probably across the two bottom ones get these blocks on either side of the tail done and then I can just go across on the others it is by far the hardest or the trickiest part of the entire quilt because everything else you know had I done the shark as a complete block which is what I'll be doing for other sharks is you just work your way around as normal you know in a like a large flower and just fill in the, the corners at the end but because the shark had already been made I'm having to work around it so that's where I'm at I will carry on doing this shark there's the picture of the of the tail I will carry on doing this shark and then I will this is day three of working on this it's Wednesday oh the cat's woken up is um I probably won't get this finished till tomorrow I've got some stud studying to do and um, there she is. She's um, been nicely asleep for the past 45 minutes while I finished off this. Um, she'll cry for a bit and then go back to sleep, but at least she's lying down properly. She's eaten, she's been to the toilet. So all is good in her world, other than the fact that she weighs nothing. So I will carry on with this. I was just thinking earlier this video will go out this coming Sunday which will make it the 26th normally I would do a sew and chat the following week but I'm going to put that off till the week after so that I've got the results from the MRI to share with you all so the MRI is by the time this goes out it'll be tomorrow Monday the 27th I've got a phone appointment with the specialist at the eye hospital the following Monday. That gives a week for the report to go through. He can see the scans almost immediately, but for the report to go through. And I've also got an appointment with my GP that week to also look at the results for that and to talk to him about my other leg, which is absolutely screaming, but I don't think it's the hip. I think it's just not happy at having to actually do stuff for a, for a change so the sew and chat will be a week late but hopefully I'll have some information to go with that and by that stage I might have actually nearly finished row 8 I'll see how my eyes go put the pussycat back where she was I don't know, see a huge lump on her side and she's all skin and bones but she's not too too bothered by it all I don't think I mean she's bothered she won't lie on that side which obviously I wouldn't either if I had a huge lump like that on my side but um she's happy and dribbling just don't dribble on my quilt but if she does she does and you wash it it's as simple as that so that's it for this bit I will now carry on with this third block, third and final block going around this this shark. I will be back once it is done to finish up this video and I will see you then. Hi again, this is the final um, bit of the video for this shark. I've actually finished it, I've done the three blocks. It wasn't until I'd actually stopped and looked at it at the end that this whole tail section should have been one more block up so as it wasn't dragging so much but live and learn I'm happy with it any future sharks will rather than just have two bits here where it narrows we'll have three and it will bring the the tail fins all up one one um one hexagon which will make it look better but I'm pleased with it you know it's um quite a big element I thought I had more sharks in row row eight but looking at it there's not so I'll just continue with row eight 
and get it done because it gets all attached to this top section so the next few blocks they're, they're just fish mainly in this um, rest of this row obviously there's the um, the part that goes down beside the cliff you know, there's the dolphin when I finish this row I'll do a an update on you know, this row number eight so that's a big dolphin. I think there's a small one it goes somewhere in row eight or it'll be row seven. I haven't actually looked at row seven beyond that first block that I've done that I still have to add in. But you know, row eight, there's the sky, different shades of blue because I obviously didn't have all one colour. The sky and the second quilt's the same, different colours. I've just finished covering last night the last of the hexagons uh, with the fabric I've got for that sky so row 8 comes down to here each block shorter it's only 8 eight hexagons high rather than 10 because to allow for the nose of the dolphin to be in the sky and for the rocks that the lighthouse sits on to be out of the water and also for the shark's tail fin to dorsal fin to come up out of the water so I'll carry on with this like I said no video next week but there will be a sew and chat the week after that'll be something like the I don't know seventh eighth something of um of April and by then I should know what's happening with a few bits and pieces. So thanks for watching this one. Don't forget to like and share and subscribe. And I will see you on the next one.